by using my planner. If you don't have a planner, you're losing right now. Detailed and intricate, then you need to make sure you put time in your planner to do your detailed and intricate outline for your actually was a part of a program where God just really seeded this ministry in me. Let me tell y'all something. I done found me a keeper. <laughs> and taking it to Sunday school and vacation by the I wasn't listening. I would be everything to this day. All right, y'all, what is up? This is your girl, Coach Naquandro. Thank you for visiting my YouTube channel today. Let's talk. I was running some errands yesterday, and I was like, I'm going to make an episode about being a teacher and also being an entrepreneur because it's real out here for us. Like, the streets is hard, teaching, and then also coming home to run a business. And I know that there are a lot more people like me out here so why not share the things that I do to keep myself balanced the tips and the skills that I use to grow in my business and ultimately what my goal is to become a full-time entrepreneur and so I just want to share that in hopes to encourage uplift and empower you as we do at the purpose place um and I want to also keep it raw real and relevant on today right and so let me just give you a background, some context of who I am and um, what I do. Um, I am a full-time teacher. So that's my full-time. That's my nine to five. If you ever hear me referring to my nine to five, that's what I'm talking about. I'm a pre-K teacher. Um, and then part-time, hour-wise, I am an entrepreneur. And so I'm the life coach and strategist at thepurposeplace.com, where I um, create courses, workbooks, workshops. Um, and do one-on-one -on -one coaching with women, Christian women specifically, and what I do in my um, downtime. So that's what I work on when I get off of work or certain days after work. And we'll talk about how I schedule out my week so that I have time to make sure I stay on track with my nine to five and then also still get stuff done for my business and how I use um, different things to help me grow and scale so that I don't become overwhelmed with everything because it is a lot. Um, being a teacher is a lot. I'm sure if you are a teacher and you listen to this, you can relate because it's like we have, to me, it's like we have three jobs in one. Like we have to go to school or remain in professional development. We have to do lesson plans. We have to go to a million different meetings in the month. And then also on top of that, teach the children. It's like, dang, I feel like I have three jobs, but I'm getting one paycheck. And like they say, teachers do not get paid enough. And we just don't get paid enough for everything that we're um, committing ourselves to do. Um, nevertheless, I do enjoy my job. Um, but I did take this job with the intention of only being here for a couple years. Now, that's my plan. I don't know what the Lord's plan is with that. But that is my plan to um, teach for only a couple years and become a full time entrepreneur. And I'm glad I get to work in a field that I actually enjoy what I'm doing for the most part. I don't necessarily enjoy the background work like the we're in pre-K and it's a public pre-K. So we have to do documentations in order to, for the funding for the state and all that. I do not enjoy that. I do not enjoy um, doing the professional development. Like there's, of course, aspects of everyone's job, anyone's job that aren't that isn't pleasurable or something you wouldn't like to do but overall I enjoy the job field that I am in um, but my goal ultimately is to become a full-time entrepreneur right I want to be full-time at the purpose place serving my sisters uplifting empowering and equipping them to move forward in their life and to live their life on purpose, the purpose that God has created and predestined for you, my good sis. And so that's what I'm doing when I get off of work. And so let me just start with how I got here, how I became a teacher. Um, um, I've been in this teaching position for like a year and a half. So before then I was a registered behavior technician and I was in that role and it got really boring. And I'm not a person where I can just sit and do nothing. Um, eventually that started to irritate me. And so I got into this high emotional rush of, I got to get out of this job. And so I found this um, 
role as a pre-K teacher. I did everything that I needed to do to secure the position. Mind you, I have a bachelor's in childhood development and family studies, but I didn't have my B2K licensure. And so in order to um, obtain this position as a pre-K teacher, I have to be in school um, working towards my B2K licensure and glory be unto God. I have a year and a half left. Well, I have a school year and a half left. So the remainder of this school year and then one more school year, um, fall and spring and I'll be done. But so I had to do all of that, get into the program and all that, do all that work to get into this role. And so once I got into it, it was fun for a little bit. And then, um, it got a little stressful. I'm like, Oh Lord, why did I do this? Why did I get into, I just came from a position where I wasn't doing nothing. Now I have a million and 17,000 things to do on, top of that one million thing that I have to do right and so that's how I got into the role and I'm sticking it out I'm thugging it out like I'm enjoying my students um my students this year are wonderful I prayed for them I said Lord I need you to I need you to curate a class that is just for me and that's exactly what he did um there are some stressors like I said the documentation the lesson plans the PD all that mess I do not enjoy it at all whatsoever those are the things that someday makes me want to um call it a work find a new job (laughs) because it's like it's too much um but nevertheless I enjoy my students and my students are the main reason why I am teaching I do enjoy seeing their growth and their progress right and that's why a lot of most of us are teaching because we want to impact our students, no matter what grade level we are, we're committed to their success, right? And so that's why we're in that field. And that's why I remain here for that. And also because it is my paycheck, it is the very thing that is fueling my business at the purpose place, right? And so that is my why. My why is because I need this nine to five to fuel my business at the purpose place. And so I encourage you, if you don't have a why for why you got this side business or for why you're even working in this nine to five as a teacher, you're going to stumble a lot. You're going to be in a cycle of, I don't feel like it. I don't want to. I'm depressed. I'm angry. I'm anxious. All of that, if you don't have a why. So I encourage you to find yourself a why to keep you consistent, not motivated, but to keep you consistent in the times where you don't feel motivated. Because a lot of times that motivation, it comes and goes, it comes and goes. But you need to have your why on firm foundation as to why you are doing what you are doing. Another why of mine is because it's serving. Being a teacher, you are serving students. You're serving the community in some type of way. And I just enjoy being a servant, right? And so once I got here in this role, I feel like the Holy Spirit is having me to stay here, right? There's some things that I need to um, learn in this role. And there's things that you need to learn in your role, right? And so I am being obedient because there's many of times where I'm like, "Uh, I don't want to be here, Lord. I feel like my time is up. And every time I either um, try to look for another job or or look for a way that I could build this so I can just leave this place. The Lord is like, eh, no. Nah. So be obedient to where you are. Be obedient to where you are. Listen to what the Holy Spirit is leading you unto doing. And so while I'm here working a nine to five and running a business, this is how I keep myself balanced. This is the topic number one balance. You need to have balance in both of your commitments and responsibilities, right? And so how I do that is by using my planner. If you don't have a planner, you're losing right now because you have so many responsibilities in that nine to five as a teacher, and then you go home to run a business. You have so many responsibilities in that. You need to have that all structured out on I'm going to work on this this day I'm going to work on this on this day so on and so forth plan out your entire week that is how I stay balanced because I'm also one that has to be constantly doing something I struggle with sitting and just relaxing right and so I even have to plan out my time for relaxing Another benefit of using your planner for balance is because you can track your progress using your planner as well. You can track how you're progressing in the goals that you've made for the year, right? 
And so that's the key to having balance is to plan, to use your planner or whatever type of tool you use to structure your day. Do that and also plan ahead. So when it comes to running the business, you know, you need social media. You need some type of way to introduce your product, your business, your service to people. You need people to get comfortable confident in your product and confident in your ability to come through for them on whatever service it is that you're providing right and so plan ahead what I do with my content is I plan it out either two weeks or a month in advance just depends on how I'm feeling if I feel like sitting down and planning out a month of content that's what I do if I feel like only doing two weeks I just do that whatever works best for you but plan your content out ahead of time and you can use the Facebook Meta Business Suite, or you can use this website called Metricool, M-E-T-R-I-C-O-O-L, and it's free. They have free plans on there as well, and there's millions of other content planning um, apps and websites that help you, you and us as creators, um, as business owners, plan out and structure our content, and the best thing to do that and the most effective way to get that done is to do it ahead of time that way every day you're getting off of work you don't have to um rush and settle and cook dinner and then sit down and plan out an hour of sit down for an hour and typing up content and you getting captions together you do that all in one setting in one day so that the rest of your week or the rest of your month you can put your focus on different areas in your business right? Because we have so many responsibilities as teachers. And then to go home and have to do tedious things like that, it's a waste of time. So maximize your time by set planning a day for scheduling content. That is a big key. And if you have a YouTube channel like me or a podcast or whatever, or you go live on Instagram or Facebook um, constantly and you want, or you want to become, or you want to start doing it, consistently I encourage you to have a list of topics that you want to cover on like on my phone I have a a, on my notepad I have a note section that says topics for um podcasts and I just have a list of things that I can turn my camera on and start talking about start talking about it or if it's something where I need to have bullet points like for this um YouTube video I just wrote this down just a few minutes ago. I was like, okay, here's my topic. I have it in my thing. Okay. So what points am I going to talk about? And these are the things that I'm doing. It doesn't have to be anything intricate or detailed, depending on your content, depending on what your service is or your products or your business is. Um, you do it ba- accordingly to what your vision is. If your vision is detailed and in- intricate, then you need to make sure you put time in your planner to do your detailed and intricate outline for your videos or your content or whatever. But for what I do, I don't have to go into all the extra stuff. You see, I have my points for this video on an index card. And so, and that works for me. And so you do what works for you, but I encourage you to find balance and plan ahead. Plan ahead is number two. And then just be obedient. Then just be obedient Um, because there's going to be stressors that come. There's going to be um, frustration that come across as you're building and growing, especially if you want to become a full-time entrepreneur. The stressors of work can sometimes bleed over until you clock out, right? And so you need to have some healthy coping habits to manage those when that happens, right? But in it, nobody said it was going to be fun. Nobody said it was going to be peaches and cream and perfect, but you just have to plan for that. Plan for the stressors, plan for the future, plan, put things in certain categories and areas on your calendar or your planner, however you schedule out your day so that you can make sure you're putting your focus strategically in different parts of your business or your nine to five so that you can track your progress. But that's basically how it's going right now for me as a teacher and also running a business. I go to work Monday through Friday. I come home and some days, like right now is Monday, Tuesday. I'm working on things for work. So getting materials together, writing my lesson plans, putting in notes. Wednesday, I have class for school on Zoom. And then Thursday and Friday, I work on the purpose place, right? That's that's what works for me. Yours might 
look a little different. You might have to take your work home every single day. And then on the weekends, you work specifically on your business. But in all of that, this is not about um, entrepreneurship or teaching, but in all of that, please make sure that you have time set aside just for you to relax and refresh. Relax and refresh. And then when you are planning this, be strategic. Put your priorities first. If you are looking for um, to better manage your time, I encourage you to go to the Purpose Place and enroll in my time management course where I teach you the priority planning strategy that I use to um, run my day so that I don't get overwhelmed, so that I um, do what's important first. And then if whatever don't get done after that, it is what it is. It gets moved to a different day. But that strategy has really helped me stay balanced in um, to track my progress and monitoring my goals. Right. And don't be like me because sometimes don't be like me sometimes doing um, forgetting to fill out your planner or um, I used to like go days without filling out my planner right now. I, I'm not currently using my planner because I'm designing a, a um a planner for the purpose place and it it just works better for what I'm doing, my lifestyle. And so I'm working towards getting that ran out. So right now I'm just going based off of my routine because I've built that routine so I can do that. I built my routine. I know what I do every day. I do this on this day and do that on this day. And I don't have anything spontaneously popping up, right? So I, I'm just going off of my routine right now, but I encourage you, if you don't have a routine to use your planner every day and enroll in that time management course so that you can learn the priority planning strategy. It's, it's, it's so helpful. And also within that course, you'll get a free um, PDF download of a daily planner that you can use um, on your tablet or you just print it out and use it every day. However, that um, best works for you. But I encourage you to do that nevertheless, because we got things to do. Um, and so if you're like me also and you are wanting to be a full time entrepreneur, I just pray that the Lord um, keeps you uplifted and he keeps you in the grace in the in your ability to keep moving forward in spite of circumstances and situations that you just keep moving forward. I just uplift us all in that prayer that our vision, our dream, our goal to fully run our business and work for ourselves does come to pass as we are contently and intentionally putting in the work, putting in the work. And one more thing, one more thing, <laughs> sorry. As we're working towards this goal, a lot of times I find myself in a space where I am just anxious to get out of this role because I'm so desperately wanting to just full-time just pour into my sisters, just full-time just pour into the purpose place, right? And I get into the space where I'm just like, mm, don't want to be here. Uncontent, not happy, right? That's why I say contently and intentionally, right? That, that, that was the Holy Spirit. Because it's distracting. It can be distracting. Not It can be, it is distracting. Because when you are uncontent where you are, your mind is focused on how can I get out of this? It's not focused on how can I serve at work today? How can I put my best foot forward? It's not focused on how can I serve today at my in my business? How can I put my best foot forward in my business? It's focused on frustration. It's focused on anger. It's focused on um, everything that's going wrong, right? It's, it's getting, having you to complain, that uncontentment. So I encourage you to pray for contentment where you are and, and always look for what's going good. Always look for the, the best things about your job and get into a role if you have to have this nine to five and it, that you get into a role that you actually enjoy doing. Like I actually enjoy my students. I actually enjoy teaching. And so I'm, even though I have those moments, those days, those seasons of, I really don't want to be here. I really don't want to be here. It's easy for me to refer back to my why and keep moving forward, right? So I pray that contentment finds you today, if not, if it hadn't already, and that you um, solidify your why today after this conversation. 
And if you ever need to talk, you want to share your experiences as a teacher and entrepreneur, drop your um, experience in the comments. If you ever want to come on to um, the podcast and we just talk about what it's like to be uh, have a nine to five and then also come back home and have to work on the business and understand that you want to run a successful business, it's going to take those after hours. You can't just come home, lay down and do nothing. You got to come home and put in work. You got to come home and put in work. You got to come home and you got to sacrifice some things. That's another thing. You got to be willing to sacrifice some things. Like I, I've been doing this for about two or three years now, like running a business on the side and also working a full-time job. I've been doing this for a little minute. And through all of this, the Lord has done tremendous work on me and my heart and my spirit and my mind and my relationships and everything. And it has also left some people in my life feeling like I'm absent or I don't want to be around or um, I'm being neglectful. But it's really this is this just the sacrifice I had to make because I'm committed to my goal of serving and empowering my sisters and being a full time um, coach and being a, a, a full time entrepreneur, um, creating products and just just expressing myself through my servitude. Right. I'm committed to that. And some of the sacrifice that came with that was me not being a- able to come out and hang around much. You know, I had to pick and choose when I was going to come out and hang out much I had to schedule in okay on Saturdays we can go hang out okay once a month we can go hang out because my vision um is more important my goal is more important than that and so you're going to have to make some sacrifices don't think that that is just going to magically appear like voila the funds are here voila we done made a hundred thousand dollars in a year that comes with sacrifice. So be willing to make those sacrifices and be okay with the results because um, God is going to work it all out for your good. He's not going to give us a vision and then just run on about his business. Like he gives us a vision. He doesn't have the plan for our lives. And when he made the plan, he made it from start to finish. And it's not to harm us. It is to pro- prosper us, right? And so I just encourage you to keep moving forward. Um, me sharing this with you just encouraged me ever more. And I'm just grateful to, to be here to have a platform to empower you, to uplift you, to encourage you, because I did not have that. And so that's a part of my testimony of why I get up on here and do this, whether it be seven views or 7,000 views. That is why. That is why. So y'all go, you be blessed. Have a wonderful day. May the Lord bless and keep you. Deuces. Hey y'all, thank you so much for watching this video. If it empowered you and supported you in any type of way, I need you to go back and like the video if you did not and subscribe to my YouTube channel so that we can stay connected. This is also a way for you to support my mission and vision to empower, uplift, and equip our sisters. Also, I wanna invite you to to join us at the Purpose Place on the Geneva app. It's a community for us to connect every single day, sharing ideas, uplifting, and encouraging each other. It's always great to be connected to like-mindedness. So if you decide to join us, girl, I will see you over there.